Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. In this video, we are going to be expanding your knowledge of F2L by learning about Sledgehammer and also uh, a little bit more about the sexy move. In our last video, we began the process of learning F2L, first two layers, which is the second part of CFOP, the advanced method for solving a Rubik's Cube. CFOP, of course, meaning the C stands for cross, white cross, the F, first two layers, this part. And then the O is orient last layer, and the P, PLL, is a perm permute last layer. So F2L involves, as we talked about in the last video, uh, intuitively, either intuitively solving or memorizing a bunch of algorithms, 41 algorithms. And I encouraged you in the last video to solve intuitively rather than uh, trying to memorize all those algorithms because it will make you a better, a much better solver. And I showed you two ways in that video, two, uh, two basic ways to insert uh, the pieces into a slot, first two layers, so a corner piece and an edge piece into each of the four slots, there's my four fingers, uh, in order to solve each of those four slots. And that's the beginning. Today, I want to, in this video, bring you a little bit further, give you a little bit more advanced uh, ideas or concepts with solving and moving pieces into the slot. Think of it like a toolbox. A toolbox has a lot of tools in it. And you can you start off with a couple of tools and then you get some more as you go along and you add them to your toolbox. And every time you add more tools, you're a little bit better carpenter. Well, I'm going to give you a couple more tools for your toolbox today. A few more ways to solve or to insert things into a uh, into the slots. All right, guys, so the first tool that I want to add to your toolbox is the idea that it is okay to insert edge pieces and corner pieces into the wrong slot and then move them to where they belong. As a quick review, remember that I have four slots with F2L. So, for example, the orange, nope, the green and orange slot would be right here. Well, conveniently and coincidentally, I already have the orange and the green edge piece, but notice that this is not the orange and green and white corner piece. Instead, I have the orange, blue, and a white corner piece, which belongs right here in the orange and blue slot. Well, I could move this piece up to the top and then set up uh, some sort of insert and then insert them together with the edge piece right here or which you know would work but is some extra moves or i can find the other piece the edge piece so i'm looking for the in this case the blue and orange edge piece okay which is right here on the top and i could just do a quick couple of moves and don't worry right now about how i'm doing this uh just what I care about isn't the way that I'm inserting them. What I care about is the fact that I can insert them in the correct slot. Okay, so I've got them now inserted together in the correct slot. Or I'm sorry, in the wrong slot, but they're together. Okay, and now it's real easy because all I have to do is pop them out of place, right? And then I can, using the move I already taught you in the last video, I can insert them where they belong 
and that is quicker than popping the corner piece out and then setting up some sort of insert and then putting them back in. It's fewer moves, fewer turns. So again, as long as this as long as the slot is not already solved, it's okay to solve the a corner piece and edge piece in the wrong slot, then pop them out and then put them where they belong. The next algorithm that I want to teach you, the next tool in your toolbox is an algorithm that is known as sledgehammer and this algorithm is super de duper important as you continue with your uh, solving cubes especially larger order cubes like four by fours and five by fives you're going to use this algorithm all the time you're going to have to know it if you want to solve bigger cubes but it's also really helpful it's not critical but it's really helpful on a three by three so I've set this up already in advance. I have uh, this, I have right here, the, uh, in this case, it's the green and red pieces. So I have the green, uh, red and white corner piece and the red and green edge piece together. Now you have already learned from our previous video that you could put this over here to the side, right? And then go back forward down and that's a perfectly valid way to insert those pieces but there's another way which is sledgehammer I want you to notice that this looks kind of like a sledgehammer maybe with the backside broken off but it's got the handle right here and it's got the front of the sledgehammer kind of like a hammer or a sledgehammer right okay and the sledgehammer the algorithm for sledgehammer is R prime F, R, F prime, okay? And what that looks like is this, and I have to, this is kind of a struggle to do this slow, but I'm gonna hold this uh, sledgehammer part facing me. So this is the front of the mallet, okay? The part that's gonna strike. And imagine there's like a nail or a spike or something right here that I'm gonna be like hitting this with the sledgehammer, bam, 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 like that. So I'm hitting it. See, there's a sledgehammer going down over and over. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. And so I am doing R prime. That's this the sledgehammer going down. So R prime F. Okay. And then R and then F prime. And that put the pieces where they belong. So I can either, when I'm inserting these two pieces, I can either go sledgehammer, which looks like that, and it's pretty fast, or I can do what you already know, which is to go one past the slot and then back forward down. Either one will put those two pieces into that slot. And so you're just gonna have to kind of depend on and choose based on where your pieces are. Because if I'm already set up right here, then it's gonna be faster to do sledgehammer. If I've got it over here, it's gonna be faster to do the way I already taught you. Okay, anything that requires you to do an extra move, so if I have to go like that, that's one extra turn, that's gonna slow me down. If I'm already right here, then it's just faster to do sledgehammer. I actually prefer sledgehammer if I can do it because I'm faster at sledgehammer, but I do often do this insert too, just depending on, whoop, just depending on how I am already uh, up here at the top. All right, so the third and final tool that we're gonna add to your toolbox today is an understanding of how to use the sexy move while you are doing F2L. You already learned the sexy move if you uh, watched my earlier video on this. If not, that's okay. Uh, I'm going to review it for you really quickly. So the algorithm for the sexy move is R U R prime U prime. And you want to get fairly fast at it. R U R prime U prime. Because every time I go through it six times, I end up cycling through and solving the cube. 
Okay, and that's an important thing to understand because look at this slot right here. Okay, the slot now is not solved, but if I recognize, well, in this case, I would actually just do sledgehammer, but if I recognize the pattern, I might, I could uh, notice that if I have this piece oriented the way it is with white facing me, and in this case, orange, but it might be, you know, depending on which slot I'm on, a different color on the side, and then this orange back here, well, then if I know the way that uh, Sexy Move works and the way that it looks, I'll, I'm going to know that all I really have to do is four more Sexy Moves, and this piece is, these pieces are going to end up solved. One, two, three, four. See? By recognizing what each state of the Sexy Move looks like, Okay, here's another one. If I see that I've got the edge piece where it belongs, and this piece that should go down here, this corner piece, orange, blue, and white on top, right above it, well, I in order to solve that, I might, there's a lot of different things I could do. You know, I could pop this edge piece out and set this up in a way that I can insert them together. Or I could just do three more sexy moves, which puts them back into place. And so that helps me knowing and recognizing that I have one of those states of the sexy move. Here's another one. Okay, this time I have blue facing me, white to the side, and I have the edge piece, the orange and blue edge piece that goes right here, I have it here on this side with blue down towards the uh, blue centerpiece. And that is going to, be, because I recognize this because of practice, is going to require uh, just two more sexy moves to get the pieces back where they belong. So by taking time to memorize, memorinate, rememberify all of the stages of the sexy move, all six rotations and what they look like, then whenever I find myself with one of those on the top, I can be like, oh, I recognize that. And I know what will happen if I do whatever. In this case, if I do uh, five more sexy moves, but this one would be faster just to do sledgehammer. Okay, but in this case, I can remember, Renate, that I have to do four more sexy moves. Okay, and this is three more sexy moves. This is what it looks like for two more sexy moves, and then I have it solved. The only way that you're going to get this is with practice. So I would just keep rotating through the sexy moves and memorize over and over again. This is what one looks like. This is what two looks like. This is what three looks like. This is what four looks like. This is what five looks like. And this is what six looks like. And then whenever you run into a situation where you have that just by happenstance, by pure chance up here while you're doing F2L, you can be like, oh, I know how to do this. This is a sexy move. And you can do the right number of sexy moves and get those in place, get those pieces in, uh, correctly inserted into the slot using the sexy move. All right, humans. So we have added three new tools to your toolbox. You now know that it is okay to solve slots in the wrong place and then move them out and put them where they actually belong. You also know how to use sledgehammer and you've learned the importance of understanding all six states of the sexy move and uh, memorizing them so that whenever you see one of those states that just happens to come up, which is actually quite frequently, 
in your F2L solving, then all you have to do is the right number of sexy moves, and you're going to magically put those edge pieces and corner pieces in the slot where they belong. I say that you now know, but you really don't because you just watched the video. You need to practice. You need to practice a lot, a lot, a lot, and then you will have them for realsies memorized in your head. This takes practice. Yeah, I, I probably say this. Well, you can't say it too much, can you? You have to practice a lot if you're going to get this, but you will get it. So again, it's okay to feel frustrated. Okay, but you can do hard things. Just don't give up. Don't quit. Keep going and you will uh, get it. So there. Yeah. Alrighty then. Well, hello. Thank you for watching my one take rambling science video where I talk a lot and uh, try to do as few and usually no edits whatsoever. So you hear all my ums and my awkward pauses as I try to collect my thoughts into my head. If you like learning about science, do me a favor. Uh, I have classes that I teach over on outschool.com and you can find out about these classes by going to my website, which is handsome science teacher, because I mean, look at this face, handsome science teacher.com, where you can sign up and get access to not only these videos, because well, you already have access to those, right? They're free but also access to packets that go along with them and live conferences with me where we where I teach you and grade your work and we learn together. I have an entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade science. Uh, also, you are welcome to, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, that helps me too, just because it gets my, the word out about me.